But the moment there is a wound and it's uncovered, you don't need to write any letter <laughs> to invite houseflies to come, come to, to invade your wound. Okay. It, it's so natural. All right, this is Draw Chronicles. Welcome back to our channel. Here we discuss all issues relating to real estate and more. Mm -hmm. And today, we're going to discuss one sensitive issue that is happening in almost everybody's home. In our homes, we have other things that live with us that doesn't pay rent or whatever. And we are blessed to have Reverend Oliver Dewuwo with us today, who is a lecturer at Whole Nursing Training, to give us all the nitty gritties around this things. Reverend, you are welcome. Thank you. How are you doing? I'm good. You look beautiful. I like you. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, let's get straight into it. Uh, yes. In our homes, we have uh, certain things that live with us, this crawling insect we have, you know, um, cockroaches, wall geckos, spiders, and all those things. Yeah. Um, do you have some in your home? Um, I cannot completely say no. Okay. But just minimal. 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 Does it? Something, which means that sometimes they could just pass by. Okay. Uh -huh, but, but constantly dealing with them. Do not permit them to use my home okay. as their residence. Okay. So, so if, if I should understand you, it means that you cannot entirely do away with these things. Not at But all. you can manage them. Exactly. It's like uh, weeds growing on okay. a plain ground. Okay. You can weed all you, you like, but the weed will grow back again. Okay. If you kill all the, the, the pests and whatever they are, new ones are born every now and then. They will still try to invade your home. So every time you, you have to be on your guard. Okay. Anytime you let your guard down, they invade. Okay. So what are some of the common pests we have in our homes? All right. So uh, we have different, different categories. Okay. We have the category of insects okay. and flies. Okay. House fly is there, mosquito, okay. um, uh, church fly, butterfly, uh, those ones, that is their set. Okay. Sometimes we have some bees. Beats. Bees. Okay, bees. Yes, bees. Okay. Yes. And the bees are also in different, different categories. Okay. I'm not necessarily referring to the one that produces honey. Honey, okay. There are some of the family members of, of bees. bees. Okay. They come to your home and create their nest. And they stay there. They can stink you and then it's poisonous. Okay. So they are also there. So those are insects. Now if you move from insects, you can go to uh, rodents. Rodents, okay. Uh, yes, those ones are... Uh, example is uh, rats, rat, okay. uh, mouse, mouse okay. and uh, the rat and the mouse too, they have different different family members okay. uh, like that. Especially when you live close to where there is uh, maybe a bush, okay. uh, yes, where it's a little bushy. But if you are in the middle of town too, you can also have the invasion of uh, rodents, okay. mouse and the rest. Yeah. There's sometimes you can even have reptiles, reptiles, yes, coming in. Uh, wow. like a uh, snake, snake okay. of different different types then we go to the lizards they are also in their families like that the okay. lizard itself is there the wall gecko okay. and the other ones like that okay uh -huh. when you live there you go to termites termites yes termites are there you know they chop whatever it it's doesn't matter over. yes it doesn't matter whether whether it's wood whatever it is once they can have access to it they break it down into you know into pieces then we have spiders okay yes it will wonder you you will not actually know where the spider actually is coming from it's coming from yeah but if you have a room now and you are not watchful or you do not do consistent cleaning of the room before you go there next time there is a spider in a corner somewhere weaving some you know some nets okay a web or something yes yeah, so that category too is, is there. there then we have uh, some of them are also birds birds they also come around to invade your home as, as pests sometimes they come and create a, a nest yeah and when they create the nest there they actually reproduce there most especially when they have comfort there and they have food okay that they are getting to to eat okay uh -huh. so the categories are okay. there in okay. several 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 ways okay so let's talk about the ones that are very common let's talk about the ants or the ants category yes we talk about uh war gecko which is another one and then cockroaches and then rats these are the exactly. very common ones that almost every home they are there yes yes uh, do this uh, pest you know possess any form of risk for people living in the house yes generally uh, pests uh, pose a lot of risk okay number one they can bite you we talk about rodents for example they can bite you yeah. if you talk about reptiles they can bite you yeah 
All right. There are, there are other ones like mosquito, uh, church of fly, house fly, and the rest. Mosquito can also bite you. Yeah. Mosquito can give you malaria if it is a female Anopheles one okay. and it is infected. But mosquito can also give other disease conditions. Oh, okay. Yes, more than just uh, malaria. malaria. Yes. Then, because we have different, different types of uh, mosquitoes. mosquitoes. Uh, recently, we, it was said that we have more than over 600 species. 600 species of mosquito? Yes. Oh, wow. Yes, so they are there in their numbers. Okay. If they find your home um, conducive for them to stay there to reproduce, grow and mature, they will actually, depending on the type that is available, will actually stay there okay. with you. Uh -huh. So apart from biting you, they can stink you. Okay. Like the bees I talk about can stink you. Yeah. Now, the other ones, cockroach and, and ma mouse, yeah. or mice, which yeah. is a plural form, cockroach can contaminate your food. Contamination of food? Yes, yeah. they can contaminate your food. Okay. You see, there are people whose homes, they, they, some people do not use uh, WC, the water closet system. Okay. Some people use the pit latrine and the rest. Yeah. You see cockroach and mice going down there. And coming back to the kitchen. Going for small, small flies and coming back to the kitchen. The kitchen. And in the night, they come and crawl over your food, especially when the food is not covered and all of that. Yes. Now, the presence of other, you know, insects can also bring more other dangerous ones. So, if there are certain kinds of insects in your home, which are also part of the best, they can be inviting serpents and lizards to follow up. To follow up because for they their feed meal. on them. They feed on them. Okay. So that's also another. Then the other thing is that they cause distraction to your property. Okay. Termite, for example, if you do not take care, can chop down their building. More of the your properties, parts, your, yeah. most especially okay. your wooden parts. Then, when they have direct contact with food itself, it's also poisonous. So, for example, there was an incident some time ago where somebody, you know, prepared soup. It was late, heated the soup, put the soup down, and covered, or covered halfway. Halfway, yeah. And the next day, they all woke up, that whole family woke up and fed on the soup. Good. Not long, the whole family passed. Wow. They were rushed to the hospital before they got there. They passed, they passed on. And it was discovered later on that it was the soup they took. A creature in the form of a wall gecko was moving in the room and fell inside, inside the, the soup. soup. And they came to heat it and it releases poisonous poison into, into the, the soup. soup. And the family did not know and they ate that soup. Okay. And that's how come they all passed. Wow. Yes, so they can destroy your properties. And then they can also disgrace you. Yeah. You have a visitor at home. <laughs> and disgrace. all of a sudden, <laughs> you are moving you know, around. <laughs> a, a cockroach comes to welcome yeah, we'll such a person. <laughs> you know, it's, you see, we already yeah, have it. Yeah, it it's not very, disgrace. very uh, palatable. Yeah. The same way for ma mice yeah. or mouse. You know, mouse can even go ahead to steal your money. <laughs> there are several instances where yeah. in people's home there are mouse or available yeah and then uh, the land uh, lord hid his money from the reach of all the children and the before mouse, yeah. mouse actually moved it to create relocation <laughs> yes okay so he moved the money from there and it became another thing okay it became a whole family confusion he felt that it was the children that stole the money yeah because the money could not have worked on it its own, its own yeah. to any other place Whereas that was not the case. It was a mouse that moved it from there and used the money, the papers, to actually create and that's where he gave birth on them. It was later on they discovered that the, the mouse actually chopped certain parts of the, the money. You know, the mouse can even go ahead and chop certain parts of your vital documents. Yes. Your certificates yes. <laughs> and, and the rest. Sometimes you prepare a very beautiful cake you want to send to somebody, the mouse come and step on it and eat a small portion of it. Yeah. And you wouldn't be able to lift that cake and go and give to the whoever yeah. you, you want to give. So the, the health effects and the challenges are numerous. Okay. Yes. It can make you spend a lot of money. money. It can make your environment more dirty and clean and unkept. Yes, so the list continues. Yeah. You mentioned about spending lots of money. Yes. Let's say these things infect your room to a certain level. Mm -hmm. Do I necessarily need to go and fumigate the place or I can just do use basic, you know, 
medicines or things available to treat them. What is the most effective way of getting rid of these things or getting rid of them when they infect your house? All right, that's, that's beautiful. It's like, uh, okay, all right, that's fine. So we, let's look at it from this angle. Yeah. First of all, you need to identify your home and the type of pest that is invading your home. Okay. Maybe it's just insects, maybe it's spider, maybe it's wild gecko and lizard and the rest. Maybe it's more than that. It's this dangerous, you know. Reptiles and all of that. Yes. Or other other times it's cockroach. Okay. Bed bugs and, and, and the rest. And fleas and all those ones. So you need to first of all do uh, a diagnosis for your home. Okay. Check to see which type of pest is actually invading your house. Okay. Which one of it this is it? Then there are several ways to deal with them. Now, we have broad ways of dealing with them. We have biological ways. Okay. We have chemical ways. We have uh, 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 mechanical ways. You understand? Yeah. So let's take it one by one. Let's yeah. take it for mouse, rodents, yeah. rats. Yeah. So those ones. They actually like very dirty environment. environment. Environment that is dirty and shady and all of that. So in order for you not to have an invasion from, from, from them, what you need to do is to make sure your environment is clean. Cleanliness. You see where we are stand we are the we are um, we are speaking now. It yeah. will be difficult for a rat or a mouse to come and stand before us because it's too open yes. and it is too clear. Huh. But when they see a very dirty environment, they would like to thrive there. Okay. They, they feel protected, they feel covered, and then they also get their food. So the way you also dispose your waste is also important. Okay. Because many of our waste we dispose of in the homes becomes their, their food. It becomes the food they eat. So when they know that their source of food is in your house, they will always be there. And you know one funny thing, when one comes to discover <laughs> the food basket. Yeah. It goes to inform the rest of them that, oh, there is food in this house. The other people don't have food, but we have in this house. So let's constantly. <laughs> that is uh, about one. Yeah. For the spiders and the rest and the cockroach, you can fumigate. And people think that fumigating is so expensive and all of that. I also feel so. Not necessarily. It's not necessarily so. If you don't ask, you may not have the knowledge. Yes, you may not know. So you may fumigate. Sometimes you may do some of the sprays yourself. You can just go for insecticide and pesticides, okay. which are common. You can use it to spray your room. First of all, you get the insecticide and the pesticides targeted to the specific pest okay. that is invading your home. Okay. When you target it like that, you take the, the, the material that comes with the, you know, the pesticide or the insecticide, and then you read and follow the instructions thereof. Some of them says, when you spray your room, you do what? You lock the door for 15 minutes and all of that. So that the concentration will be strong in the room as at that time. Okay. But unhealthy to you as a human being. All right. When it is at that level of concentration. Yeah. That is what will actually kill the mosquitoes, the bed bugs, the fleas, the uh, spiders, the spiders and, and all of that. Now the spiders too, you don't give them chance. You see, anytime you see them, they want to grow or they are tentacles and web there, you clean them up. You remove them from there. You flush them out. Okay. For lizards and wall gecko, lizards can never come to anybody's room if they don't have access. Okay. Sometimes there are cracks in, your... in the ceiling, cracks in the doors. Sometimes there are not even any cracks, but we open down the doors carelessly. There are children at home. Sometimes you are in the bedroom as father or mother, maybe you are in the washroom, and your child goes out and opens down the door. And lizard gets the opportunity, not just lizard, even snake, yeah. can get opportunity and enter your room and find a very comfortable, conducive environment, preferably the dirty part of the house, yeah. the room, where it will have comfort and hide itself to flourish. It's going to stay there and wait for you. Not long, that same you know, rodent that has entered your room will begin to reproduce and multiply in your house. If you are not careful, they make your house the Arizona headquarters. <laughs> you know? Yeah, sure. Uh -huh. So you have to determine which type of it it is and all of that. Oh, that For right? people who have large, um, maybe large homes and churches and institutions and whatever they are, 
the fumigation is very good for them yes i i heard some time ago that the whole market those days that um, the covid you know yeah. cases was yeah. were high markets were fumigated they were fumigated and i heard i went to the market to buy something and i heard the market women discussing that ah, they had more than over 400 you know rats dying the next day okay yeah so they were shocked that ah so we we're living Maybe with this. over 400 rats in this market no, and no, all no. of us we were together <laughs> <laughs> and you know it's the same for snake yes it is said that snake is so wise a snake can live with you in your home for more than 30 years. Wow. You and the snake will be there for all this while. It comes out the time, it studies you, knows your, your movement and every, every one of them. So the fumigation is very good. Uh, for uh, other insects like um, uh, flies, like uh, mosquito and the rest, that's why you use the insecticide treated net okay. in your home. And it is not only for babies and children, it's for everyone's body. Because it will actually prevent you from having a, a, a malaria yes yeah, so these are some but some people some of us also says that we feel uncomfortable sleeping in the, the, the treated mosquito nets uh, well we cannot necessarily force someone to sleep in the, the net that is why there are several ways of dealing with them yeah the goal is that if the mosquito is not present it won't go ahead to bite you and if it doesn't bite you you won't have the effect you won't have malaria and the rest. Sure. Uh -huh. So then, if you will not use the insecticide treated net, then it means you're going to go for something like a coil, or you're going to use a spray to spray the room, or something. There are also natural remedies to doing that. Okay. Yes, yeah, so I was referring to um, the biological model. The, bi the biological model is where you use other animals to control some. Okay. So for example, if there are a lot of mouse, wow invading your home mice invasion you get a cat okay so the cat does the killing finish the job okay. kills all of them okay okay and they don't only kill the mouse they also kill you know lizard lizard yeah. and all those ones you understand so when you happen to find any of them in your room target them and kill them if you can kill them yourself you kill them okay. other than that they go multiply the sure. so i spoke also about the physical one where when there are cracks in your wall yeah. cracks in the door it's good to install you know uh, this kind of doors we call them trap doors trap doors yeah. yes trap doors so that even if your kids come to open down the main door the trap door you know it has a, a spring that restrains it yes the moment you open it closes by itself yeah uh -huh. so you use that trap door and then it prevents so that there are there is a net on it the whole thing is a net it prevents bears you know flies mosquitoes cockroaches and all of that now there are also powder you can use yeah i think i mentioned that in one of the yes yeah, so there are some powder that can kill cockroach and all of that okay uh -huh. what and about the, the application how would you apply that you know you're not you know poison your food or whatever you know sometimes you can apply this and we have some of us have our, our farm produce, you know, in our kitchen, maybe on the floor. Mm -hmm. How would you apply these powders that you know the animal or the insect or the pest will not crawl in and come and infect you? That, that's a very good question. Yeah. It's very simple. First of all, whatever powder you want to use comes with uh, an instruction, an instruction, yeah. an instruction of use or mode of application. Yeah. Usually, it comes with that. So it is not healthy for you to just get any, you know, powder and just go ahead without reading because the compositions may be different and the instructions may be different. If you follow the instruction, you will have the efficacy of the very, you know, uh, pesticide, you uh, pesticide that can, comes in the form of powder. Okay. It can come in any form. It can be powder, or it can be sprayed, yeah. it can be any of them. Or sometimes it can even be liquid. You mix it with food and go in. Put at certain places for they consume and they die uh, so it depends on your your choice how you want to go about it so you read that instruction then also you know that it's dangerous once it can kill a living organism which is the rodents or the pest then it can also even if it's not able to kill a whole human being it can affect the human being sure sometimes it can give you you know uh, a runny stomach. stomach or sometimes you can even be hosp hospitalized yeah 
because everybody with this, their system. So you look at where you are going to apply it. Where do these pests actually invade kitchen? But which side of the kitchen? It's not every side of the kitchen that you put food. So those places, those, you know, on the wall, that thin, thin line, line yeah. you apply it on those thin lines. Because for instance, when they are moving by me, they will hit the wall and then change their direction, you know. Yeah. Yes, they will hit. So definitely they will have access to that powder in that thing. Like, it's not like going to dump the whole thing in the middle of your kitchen. Okay. One thing I, I almost forgot is how we keep our food. Both cooked food and uncooked food. How we keep them is very, very important. That's what I'm saying that when the pests realize that there is available food for them, yeah. they can just walk through to your kitchen and they have access to fish and meat and tomatoes and vegetables, raw like that. Then they will always parade in your house. So the way we pack our food, cook food and uncook food, can invite, you know, housefly, can invite rats, cockroaches, and all of that. So then, food that needs to be packed should be packed appropriately. Okay. They should be, they should be packed. The ones that need to be refrigerated, refrigerated. The ones that need to be air dried, air dried. The ones that need to be put on certain shelves in a certain container, sometimes even airtight containers, should be done that, that way. way. Then it helps solve majority of the problem. Then when you go to our own rooms, the way we pack our things, you know, for example, mosquitoes like very dark places, quiet corners. So when you enter your room now, one of the areas mosquito can hide is where your clothes are, especially when they are packed haphazardly. Okay. The mosquitoes will hide there waiting for the opportune time. <laughs> and you, you may not know that the mosquitoes sure. are there. Yeah. Uh -huh. But it is when the time comes and you realize that, ah, I've been beaten by a mosquito. You begin so to find the, you don't even feel it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You don't even feel it. Yes, sure. So uh, we pack our rooms, everything in an orderly manner. Yeah. So that even if a, a mouse or any other rodent mistakenly gets there, even cockroach, it will be difficult for us to identify that we are living in this room with certain rodents or pests. Yeah. It will be easily either because the whole environment will not be conducive for the operations. Sure. But the moment the room is clumsy, everything anywhere, you know, pure water rubber in the corner, they eat last three days mm. and they put it under a table or a chair, it's there, you know, all manner of rubbish. That's where they thrive. They actually enjoy, you know, that kind of uh, environment. environment. Let, let me bring this one real quick. You are a reverend. Yes. These things, some of them, do they have spiritual implication or not? These things we have in our rooms. Some of them. Because I heard story that somebody said, oh, a walk girl queen in your room to, you know, cause sleep paralysis and stuff like that. People have been saying things. All right. And even the um, cobwebs, you know, Wizards and things can work on that. Yeah. Is there anything like that? All right, so <laughs> myself, I've been hearing that a lot. But we are talking about scientific evidence. Scientific evidence. As I speak to you now, yeah. I have not seen any material on or scientific proof of those claims. Okay. However, we live in a very dangerous and demonic world. Okay. And the enemy that we are talking about, the devil, can use any material, can use any medium to attack you if he wants to attack you. So how would we be able to tell that a family that ate the soup that was contaminated by a creature like a, a walgaku? How would we know? They lost their lives. How would we know that it was the enemy that attacked them or not? So, in order to be free and uh, free-minded from all of this, just make sure they don't survive. Okay. So that even if witchcraft or whatever it is want to use it, there's nothing there to be used. <laughs> Prevention is always better than cure. Sure. <laughs> all right. Yes. Uh, we, we, we're talking about the cracks in our rooms. You mentioned that the cracks giving access to uh, this. Uh, insects coming to our room. Yes. What can we do extra? 
let's say like home remedies available, things that we can do that they are not far-fetched. You'll be able to get them in our homes to prevent these things from coming to our some of the home remedies available. Okay, so I think I mentioned some of them yeah. already. First of all, when there's a crack in your room, it is a disadvantage. A crack in your door, in your window, in your ceiling is a disadvantage. Okay. Like I told you, a serpent can live with somebody for years. Sure. And the person will not know. But you, nobody will know the day the serpent will try to attack. Mm. And you, you may be sleeping before the serpent comes in. So first of all, look at the, the door, your door. Is there space under? And is there space in between? Okay. At the top of it, does it give access, leeway to this, you know, um, pest? to invade your home, what can you do? Call a carpenter to mend it. Simple. What about your ceiling? Is it broken? If it's broken, you are prone to so many things. So many attacks from all this. Okay. Yes. A, a snake may be finding meat to eat, and it's a lizard. And the lizard finds its way to your room. What do you think? The snake will follow. Of course. So take a little time and mend that place. Okay. If it's your net that is torn, as I'm speaking to you, I mentioned uh, 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 insecticide treated net. There are people who are using their nets for all these years. It's dirty, they have not washed it. Wash it. The places that are torn, sew them together. Let them not have access. Because when they have, they will, they will, they will always be coming around. The way you handle your environment, if you make the place very wet all the time, mm. you dispose of rubbish, rubbish anyhow, wet rubbish, dry one. Uh, 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 Some of them, keep, you keep them in the kitchen. Yes, you keep them, you see? So, that actually is actually their vehicle through which they, they, come. they come. So, when they get that like that, they know they can survive in that kind of environment. And so they come around. For example, if you do wet, you know, uh, 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 you do uh, wet refuse, and you di you dispose it anyhow in your community, you are inviting house flies to come around. Sure. So if you don't want that, what do you do? Yes, dispose of the wet, you know, R waste water. Yeah. You know, for example, you def your children defecate in the house anyhow, and all of that at the front of your your gates, the defecate. What do you think? There will be a party of, you know, house flies at your gates. And from the gates, they end up in the kitchen. Sure. Cover your food. Because if you don't cover, that's the next place they are going. Those are just little, little, petty, petty things. People's trap door that they fixed for several years, the net has cut off. Fire has even, <laughs> you know, <laughs> destroyed part of it. Sure. But the trap door is still trap door to them. So the trap door is there, all right, but it has become a white elephant. It is not producing the required re result or reason why it has been installed. So fix your trap door net. Not only that, there are people's windows. The net that has been fixed there is more than 10 years. It is dilapidated now. It is, some places have actually cut off. And we, and we chuck it with rubber. Uh, we chuck it, you know. <laughs> We support it with other things, but <laughs> even plaster. So it's, it's a simple thing to do is to call a carpenter, do a little more investment in yourself. Okay. If the family that had all passed away because of that, uh, you know, pest, if they knew they were going to die, they would have done all the right things. Yeah. Prevent any, <laughs> even lizard or even fly from coming to their room mm. because they, there's a warning that this thing could, you know, end your life. But because they, they, they took things for granted. So when we take things for granted, we, we are susceptible to many more dangers. Okay, okay. So these are basic, basic, basic. Your kitchen, put it in order. But one thing I don't understand, cockroaches. Yes. Is it that we sometimes bring the seeds or the, you know, their eggs from somewhere to our room? Because sometimes your room, you just all of a sudden they come through. You don't know how they get there. All right. How, how, how they, do they come about? It's, it's natural. It's just like, this part of your body is plain, it's unhurt and uncut. So because of that, you hardly find, you know, housefly coming there. Okay. But the moment there is a wound and it's uncovered, you don't need to write any letter 
<laughs> to invite houseflies to come, to, come to, to invade your own. Okay. It, it's so natural. Yeah. However, sometimes some of the things we bring from other places, oh. some people bring some used items, second-hand items, and things like that. They pick things from one place to another that is already infect, infected. Sometimes even the cockroach has laid some eggs, eggs in there. and then you bring it in there. And once there is no system to check them, they quickly, you know, has begin to grow and, and multiply. Okay. We've, we've heard it all about how we go about it, about this. Uh, you know, we've, we've seen, you know, on, online some of the room, home remedies, like they said, onion and soda. Yes. And can they also prevent some of these things? Yes, they can. They, that, those are actually um, uh, natural ways of, of handling them. Okay. Natural ways of, I, I think I didn't mention much on, on that, the, yeah. of the natural way. Because usually our work, uh, so I didn't really mention much of that. But there are very natural ways of handling the pests. And they are effective. Yes. To many people who have used some of the natural ways, for example, some people come out that uh, if you want to, you know, deal with mosquitoes in your room, you can just burn, you know, orange peels. Okay. And the scent of the orange peel will spell, it's like a repellent. Okay. It will repel, you know, uh, mosquitoes. mosquitoes. Okay. Some people also come out with the fact that if you burn car or lorry ties in your locality, it will repel... That black ant. The black ant. It will also repel snakes. snakes. Okay. And then sometimes alligators. Okay. Yes. So there are some uh, natural remedies some people use. And I think once it works for them, it's fine. There, there is no problem at all. Yeah. Okay. The very final one before we end it all. Uh, sure. Imagine that I have a yam in my room. Okay. And then I realize that uh, a mouse comes to feed on it. Do I still need to consume that? Can I just cut off the side that the mouse <laughs> fed on? <laughs> and prepare the rest or I should throw it's all a, of it's a very <laughs> dicey question. <laughs> It's a very dicey question because yeah. if I say the truth, the truth is that you are supposed to discard them. Mm, well, yeah. we are <laughs> supposed to. <All> right. <laughs> but <laughs> somebody also say the way the economy has become now, <laughs> and mouse has come to touch yeah. my yam, so because of that, I should throw my yam away. Yeah. The person will not, you know, easily agree to throw it away. But the safest thing, like I said, prevention is always better than Thank cure. You. It's always, always better than kill. You know, those days, when we were young, uh, there used to be some diseases that affect chicken. Chicken. So, when it comes around, many of the chickens will just die, die. all of them. Yeah. Even, even the local ones is what I'm referring to. The yeah. local birds, they all fall and die. But you know, when they fall, those days they fall and die, you are asked to go and bury them. You will see that some people will manage We'll do it and come and smoke it. Do it, smoke it, remove the intestines and say, oh, because I smoke it, yeah. there will be nothing wrong. What if there's something wrong? Sure. <laughs> what if there's, so if there's something wrong, you pay the penalty. You would think that you are trying to, you know, con preserve and consume that meat. But if there's a serious infection now and you are sent to the hospital, the price of drugs, yeah, you will regret and regret and regret and regret. So that is why I preach prevention, which means that if you don't want to throw the whole of your yam away because some mouse came to eat a certain portion, maybe people go to the bush, they go under a mango tree, there is no mango, one of them has fallen, bears have eaten half. Yeah. They take their cutlass <laughs> and cut that half off. <laughs> you know, they consume oh, yeah. the other half. <laughs> <laughs> it's a short thing. <laughs> you know, it's dangerous. Yeah, okay. Because sometimes they release their thousands inside. inside. Okay. And you may not know these are our hands, our palms. If you look inside with your physical eyes, you will say it's clean. Yeah. If we, you know, we swap and put the microscope under my microscopic examination, you will see a lot of, you know, microorganisms. They will be disgusting. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Exactly. Aha. So you wouldn't see them with your eyes. So maybe the mouse has gone to eat a poison somewhere and now come to eat your own yam. Yeah. 
Yeah. But the young will not leave any information that, oh, I went to eat poison and so, so, so please, so be careful. Sure. So if you don't want to lose your yam, just prevent away from, prevent this these place. pests and rodents from coming to invade your home. All right. So you heard it all. Reverend Oliver Dewo have summarized it for us, the ways we'll be able to prevent these pests from disturbing us. And if they do, how we can drive them away from our homes. It is our home. Let it make ours and not let any other thing join us. It's glad to have you join us on today's episode. I believe you learned a thing or two and you can share this with your friends and family. Please subscribe to our channel. This is Dwar Chronicles. I am Prince K. See you next time.